Welcome inside the Mountain West Network studio where we're talking NCAA tournament. New Mexico, fresh off their Mountain West tournament championship, draws a number seven seed and they'll play 10 seed Stanford in the South region. I know their team and their, their situation pretty well because they recruited Cullen really hard. Um, so I know their roster. Uh, they do a good job. They're a really good team um, with Powell and Eustace and Chasen's from Iowa. Uh, so I know a little bit about him since he's been younger. So uh, we've got a really good team, a really good starting five, and a couple of good bench players. So it'll be a really tough test for us. I think our guys will be ready for it. You can play against a great opponent no matter what, and you've got to show up on the day. Best team wins to advance, and can't take anything for granted. Um, this is our last opportunity for a lot of guys um, on this team, and I think the experience last year will help us. We're a real hot team right now, playing really well. Uh, real talented guys on their team. Uh, definitely not somebody to ever take lightly, especially, you know, when you play in the tournament, you can't ever look past any team. Everybody's good, so you know, we're just excited to have the opportunity to play them. I know they're a very good basketball team. Uh, they won their conference tournament, beating a very good team in San Diego State. And actually, they're, you know, their head coach and I played against each other in college. So, uh, you know, Craig Neal and I played against each other, uh, Georgia Tech. So, uh, you, know, we, you know, we go way back from regard of uh, just knowing each other. And uh, he's done a great job with his team. New Mexico and Stanford will tip things off on Friday at 1240 Central Time in St. Louis. TBS will have your television coverage. Please be joined now by national basketball writer Andy Glockner to talk about the New Mexico Lobos and their matchup with Stanford. First of all, let's talk about your reaction to a number seven seed for New Mexico. I wasn't surprised. I know a lot of people thought they maybe should have been higher, and I think they're playing the caliber of basketball that they maybe represent themselves as better than a seven seed. It's sort of the Louisville argument. Mm -hmm. Louisville got a four seed. Louisville is not a four seed in quality right now, but Louisville's resume said it was a four seed, and New Mexico's resume, because of what they didn't do in non-conference play, in composite, says that they were a seven seed. I didn't think it was grossly unfair based on the standards that the committee tend to use. Okay, how do the Lobos match up with Stanford in their first tournament game? It's a weird matchup. Um, Stanford while not as physical as New Mexico, is as big as New Mexico. New Mexico, one of the biggest teams in the country. Mm. Stanford right there with them. They got a bunch of guys, 6'10", 6'10", 6'9". One of their two guards is 6'6". They've got the ability to step out a little bit, sort of like an Alex Kirk. They've got bigs that can face up and shoot it with some three-point range. They've got a 6'9 NBA prospect on, on the roster that can bang a little bit. Uh, they've got a good point guard who, sort of like a, a Kendall Williams, is, is a capable passer, but more of a scoring guard. It's almost like looking in a funhouse mirror. They're not exactly the same team, but there's enough similarity here that it, there are going to be some interesting dynamics when you see the, the game unfold. New Mexico making their fourth tournament appearance in the last five years. Last year, they all would admit it was a disappointment, the loss yeah. to, to Harvard. This team has taken a different direction. Not a lot of cameras around them for their selection, no cameras around them for their selection. They kind of play the us against the world. We're no longer the darlings. That's the, the way that they have taken this approach. How are they better prepared this year going into the NCAA tournament, maybe as compared to last year? I think they're better prepared because of the experience from last year, the disappointment. They, whatever they want to say, they've had to carry that with them all season. They did not win the regular season title. They came back and defended their tournament title. All of this is very important. They've had another very, very competent to quality season. New Mexico basketball now is elevated to that stature. They're a 25-plus win team regularly. They are the league champions regularly. And unfortunately, people measure you on what you do in the middle of March in the NCAA tournament. And they have, for various reasons, whether they ran into a hot team or last year just didn't play well, whatever it may be, they have disappointed. There, there's no way to sugarcoat this at this point. This is a game that New Mexico has to win. I know this is one game sample size and it doesn't really mean anything and Stanford's a decent team and they match up kind of weird. Anything can happen. New Mexico has to win. They have to win this game. Get to a game, presumably against Kansas, take a shot at a team that nobody's going to be embarrassed if you lose that game. You've played once already, you're familiar with them. You, you can't lose to Stanford after losing to Harvard with this core, with the experience that they had. I don't think cameras matters. I don't think the attitude they have in the locker room, good. You want a bunker mentality? That's great. It's not going to mean anything when they get out on the floor. They're going to understand the magnitude of the game. They're going to understand the magnitude of the disappointment they had last year. They need to translate that into positive energy, not nervous energy. Get out to a good start, play their style of game, impose their will on Stanford, 
and hopefully the refereeing will help them too because I think the way the game is called, whether they're allowed to get away with their physical play against Stanford's slightly softer front court, I think is going to be a big factor for them. All the players after the championship in Las Vegas all use the word unfinished business, so we'll have to see how that plays out. The starters, though, in the semifinals and the finals combined scored 130 of the 134 points. Cullen Neal had a four-point play where he was fouled on a three-pointer. Banked that it was, in. That was the <laughs> only yeah. points coming off the bench yeah. in the semifinals and the finals combined. Can that be a recipe that they use in the finals, or do they need some sort of contributions off the bench? They'll need it off the bench, but I think I would say that when you go down the stretch of a conference tournament, obviously New Mexico was playing against a Boise State team that gave them three very tough games this year. Mm -hmm. And then obviously San Diego State, the two heavyweights in the league this year, very, very familiar with your personnel. I'm not saying that I know for a fact that Craig Neal thought this way, but you tend to go with what you know when opponents know you and you know them. Now when you get out, you're playing a Stanford team that's going to be less familiar with your personnel. Now maybe your bench guys can function a little bit more. Now maybe they don't know the one or two things those bench guys can do. Or you can spot guys a few more minutes and get something from them. I think tendencies down the stretch of conference tournament play are so well known that I think you just kind of bunker in, you, you tighten up your rotation, and you go with your best guys, and you see what happens. And it worked out for them. Uh, but I don't know that they can just get contributions from three or four guys in total and be a successful team. It might get through one round. I don't think it could get through more than that. Well, let's go there. Looking at that South region bracket, if they do play well, how far can they go? Well, let's assume Kansas gets past Eastern Kentucky. Eastern Kentucky can shoot, and, and Kansas historically has had a, a couple of wobbles against teams of that quality. But imagine that they'll get through. Uh, we've seen this game yep. in, in name. We saw this game in Kansas City this year. Uh, One-point game at the half. Alex Kirk in massive foul trouble. Kansas pulls away in the second half. They won by 17 or whatever it was. Totally different scenario in my mind now. No Joel Embiid this weekend. Andrew Wiggins, much different player now, much more assertive, exploded down the stretch of the season a couple times for him. Don't think Alex Kirk, without Embiid in the game, is going to be an 18-minute player in this game. Mm -hmm. Hugh Greenwood is healthy. New Mexico is playing better defense than they did at that point. They understand their offensive strategy better. I don't think you can necessarily look at that game and really take a ton away from it. There, there are individual things you can look at. Um, you know, Williams and Bairstow had 24 points each. Bairstow is a matchup problem for this Kansas team. They don't have a physical four that can handle him. But at the same extent, I don't know that New Mexico has a guy that can handle NBA top five pick Wiggins either. Mm -hmm. So you look at it from that standpoint, I wouldn't worry if I'm New Mexico about what happened when they played the first time. But at the same extent, a 17-point gap is a lot to overcome, whether it's a quasi-home game or not. I think it's a game, I, if you were going to look at the two-seed matchups, when you look at this, I, I think I would rather... From New Mexico standpoint, draw a Kansas, then maybe a Wisconsin, or another team like that with a funky style, the ability to shoot from the perimeter that might bother New Mexico. This is personnel they know. It's another revenge situation. You can yeah. go back to the bunker. Uh, it's not a terrible matchup for them, but they have to get past Stanford first. All right. Well, the Lobos and the Cardinal will tip things off at the NCAA tournament on Friday, 1240 Central Time, be televised by TBS. For Andy Glockner, I'm Jesse Kurtz. Thanks for logging on to the Mountain West Network.